Are you an underwriter? I may have the solution for you, and it's not always just add more description, although sometimes it's add more description. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Deciphering Writing Advice. Today I'm going to be talking about filter words. What's a filter word? It's a word that reminds the reader that they are reading. It filters the experience through a character's lens. It kind of just reminds the reader that they are not experiencing this for themselves and that they are in fact reading about somebody else experiencing these things. Now to some people that might sound a bit ridiculous because like how could you forget that you're reading a book? Like my wife for example cannot picture what happens in books at all. She just does not have a mental image of what's happening. She's enjoying the reading process. She likes reading books but she doesn't like play a movie in her head when it happens. Some people do, some people don't. Everybody has a different experience when they read books and everybody interacts with books differently. And while, yeah, okay, some people can never forget that they're reading a book, they're always filtering their experience through their character, it's that harsh reminder and that disconnect from the reader to the character. So instead of that thing of like when you read My Heart Pounded in My Chest, or Here's Her There See Her Heart Pounded in His Her There See Her Chest, um, <laughs> and the reader, regardless of how connected they think they are with the character, kind of gets that feeling, you get that, I felt my heart pounding in my chest, and it's like, oh cool, well, you enjoy that feeling then, because I'm not interested anymore. And then of course you go all the way through to people who really, really strongly connect with the characters, like me, who when we read things like, I felt, it just, it's very jarring, it stops you from being super immersed in the story itself. Oh, well, <laughs> my next point is why is it bad, but I've just just explained why it's bad. It's bad because it throws the reader out of the narrative. Not every reader, not every time, um, but it's pretty common. Um, and like, if you've been getting feedback on your manuscript from like beta readers or critique partners or like your mum, who says, oh, I just didn't really connect with the character, a lot of the time it's because you're filtering the experience and you're doing that through filter words. That is very often what that problem actually means. It just didn't connect with the character. Almost exclusively means I had my experience filtered through this use of these words. So examples of filter words include but are not limited to felt, heard, saw, touched, tasted and smelled. I'm not saying you can never use them and I will point out here that they absolutely should go in your first draft. Throw in all the filter words you want in your first draft, because in the grand scheme of things you will just have to edit them out later, but at least you've got a first draft to edit if you put them in. So how do I stop doing it? Like I said, don't try to stop for your first draft. Like it's great if you can, but if you can't think of what else to say other than I felt scared, just throw out the I felt scared. Just put it out there. Let it sit in your manuscript, come back to it next time when you're editing through or rewriting or whatever your process is and change it then. Because again, like I just said, it's really important to just get a first draft out and <laughs> and yeah, you just, you need to get your first draft out there on the paper, on the screen, whatever process you have. And throwing out and I felt, I heard, I saw, I touched, I tasted, I smelled, I've experienced in some way, shape or form. I know there's another one, I just can't think what it is. <laughs> Throwing out a filter word in a first draft or even a second draft is not really a big deal. It's only like when you get closer to the actual publication point that you need to start making sure that these are gone. And the best way to do that, of course, is to find a list of them online. There are plenty. And put, like, search and replace. Well, not search and replace. Search your document for felt or feel, depending on your... Tense, that's the word. Um, and then go through, read the sentence and see if you can edit it. And like I've said before in other deciphering writing advice videos, the best thing to do to get practice at this is write a whole thing where you write a lot of different filter sentences and then just edit them just for practice. Um, like, I know that sounds like such a, <laughs> such a like school activity, but it is really useful, so. So, okay, that's great, edit it out, but like, what do you edit it into? 
Well, I felt scared can turn into things as simple as fear washed through me or my heart pounded in my chest as if desperate to escape the chasing beast. Like, you can go all the way dramatic with this. And like, there's loads of different resources that you can use to try and help you find different terminology for it, but it's the thing, the, the best thing to do, and this is the advice that everybody gives, and don't worry, I will explain it further because I feel like it's never explained enough, is to try and think about how you actually feel in your body when you are experiencing the emotion that you are saying they felt. <laughs> so like, I felt excited can turn into, you look into yourself, you look into your own experience and you think, okay, when was the last time I was excited? What was I excited about? How did that present itself? Did you become restless? Did your heart beat faster? Were you unable to stop smiling? Did you keep checking the time to see when the thing was going to start? Did you have so much energy building up inside your person that you ended up, as you were walking down the street to get in the car or whatever, to get to the place, you sort of ended up like nearly tripping over your feet because you're like, I want to get there faster. Like, what's the deal? How did you last experience excitement? And can your character portray any of those things? And it's not an easy task because like, you're sometimes sat there going, right, when was the last time I felt grief? And you're thinking, it was a long time ago now, potentially. Uh, hmm. Hmm. And like, obviously everybody experiences their own emotions differently from everybody else, but yeah, I don't know. You'll, you'll be fine. Um, how to stop doing heard is you just describe the sound. Like, I heard the wind whistling through the trees becomes the wind whistled through the trees. You just take out that herd. I saw, again, you don't need your characters to see things, or, you know, other pronouns, saw, but, like, you don't need your characters, you don't need your characters to see things, you can just describe the environment that they can see, you don't need to filter that through a, well, but it's my character seeing it, like, we know that it's your character seeing it, that's sort of how books work, we all know that, you don't, you don't need to specify it. Um, for touched, like, that's another one of those ones where you're gonna have to go in and change the sentence a little bit, because it's like that thing of, I touched the rough brick walls, it's probably better to say something like, I ran my hand across the rough brick walls, or, um, I, I touched his chest, I don't know why you're touching his chest, but you know, let's imagine you are. And then you change it to things like, my hand or my fingers or whatever pressed against lightly ran down just be more descriptive about it it's not just like like i touched the bookshelf could mean anything from like a gentle caress to a full on slap like be more descriptive put in more intent talk about how exactly you're doing it what does it feel like in return like I, tu I touched his chest could turn into his chest was warm under my hand. It's like, it's obvious that you've touched him then. Like, why am I talking about it like this? <laughs> yeah, like tasted and smelled is a little bit more complicated because it's, it's just a little bit more complicated. It's less easily used because like, you have to, like, yeah, I just, I, str I struggle a lot more with tasted and smells. If you have any like top tips, advice for how to get tastes and smells in there. Um, I feel like the scent of insert smell here wafted through the air and he smelled of, why is it, who is this he I keep talking about? <laughs> he smelled of a thing, I touched his chest, like what is happening? Um, I'm all in, I'm all in Mary Ellen breaking the curse headspace, aren't I? <laughs> the love interest in that is a man, and it's all in the first person perspective, so I'm just, yeah, it's fine. Um, so yeah, I hope you found this helpful, if you did, if you've got any top tips about filter words, please do let me know, even if it's like, hey, do you want to come and watch my video about filter words? There is absolutely no reason not to do that, feel free to share it in the comments, let me know. I really love building a wealth of resources because I do think that one of the best ways to figure out how to do stuff is by looking at lots of different people's advice and then trying it yourself. Like I said, definitely don't worry about it until you're on your like edits and trying to edit it out. It is so much easier to edit it 
out and change it up in edits than it is to try and like just magically not do the thing. <laughs> like it is, yeah, just, it's so much easier to edit it. Don't let this cripple your first draft uh, <laughs> because you're too busy going, but, but how do I describe feeling nervous? Just throw it out there the first time. It's fine. Don't forget my book is available for pre-order. Links are listed below. Uh, if you don't know what it is or what it's about, it's called Mary Allen Breaking the Curse. It is a an adult fantasy novel, uh, kind of action adventure -y. It's about Mary who wants to be a guardian, but she can't be because she's a woman and because she's got the secret heritage that she's trying to hide from and because <laughs> she's just a nightmare for arguing with people. She's great. I love her to pieces. She is just the best. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's more information and the proper blurb and pitch and stuff in at the links listed below. Please do go and check it out because I feel like I've just pitched it in the worst possible way. <laughs> Unless it's totally where it worked for you, do let me know. Um, if you like this video, give a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to the channel if you want to see more from me, deciphering writing advice, how to write LGBT characters and why you should anyway, my self-publishing journey, more about Marielle and breaking the curse, and all things writing and queer life on this channel. If you want, you can uh, follow me on Instagram or you can sign up to my newsletter. Both of those are linked below as well. Uh, there is also a link to my coffee account in the description below if what all you really want to support is me making videos like this. If you want, um, no, blur, 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 hang on. <laughs>